So let's just start at the fact that prior to this, there is no nguni or bakone terminology or meaning of mfekane or difakane. It was due to the impaired hearing of the Westerners, ka. Just like the term unkulunkulu is actually umkulu womkulu. Even going as far as umkulu nomkubulwane. If you don't know nomkubulwane, she is regarded as our great mother within our language. And it would only make sense that we have a mother and a father. Umkulu nomkubulwane. Due to patriarchy becoming umkulu womkulu. And the impaired hearing of the Westerners, Unkulunkulu. Going back to Mfegane. Before I carry on, keep in mind the nations of Nwangi, Mfegas, Mfega, Naz. The term Mfegane actually comes from the term Felekaya. We also know about Felekaya, who was the son of Nwanga or Nwango Galanga the first, not Langa the second, who was Ubabagazwite. So we already spoke about the Ngoni in Tanzania, Zambia, Malawi, etc. outside of South Africa and Zimbabwe. Some of them are traced to be descendants of Jele or Jere, son of Mfeka. So what we don't know about these wars is that there were actually slave raids done by missionaries. These slave raids were done by stealing or killing of cattle and people, including children, as means to depopulate clans because we all belong to a clan and we understand this because of our totems itagazelo many of times the way nations were formed were actually due to absorption or protection and mainly intermarrying another thing that may shock you our nations didn't actually believe in long spears we all preferred short ones to protect our families as well as hardened shields made of remarkable equipment to protect us from bullets as well as ukwazwa. There's also no such thing that we didn't use. That's why we have the word ispamu, as well as zenuzi, which means nuclear, and tubula. All I can say is we all put up a good fight. But I'm now going to name all these wars that you may have not heard about because every clan fought. And when they seek refuge, they got absorbed or intermarried into that culture or clan. To also stop the propaganda, the Hollywood story of Shaga Zulu is all a narrative of the West romanticizing the idea of the Zulu kingdom. This goes for Lesotho, Eswatini, Botswana, Namibia. We all know that these countries were imposed on us. Those who get it, get it. For instance, looking at this old document, you tell me how Zulu conquered all these clans, powerful clans, or was it the Group Areas Act? 